Hello everyone, this is Kona, and thank you for tuning in to another video. Now today I want to talk about casuals, and kind of casuals in general, but also casuals in TF2 and some of the other games that I've been playing. Now a while back, Valve released their update for competitive mode in TF2, and I guess it's kind of no surprise that they were doing it. It's been in the talks for a while, and they finally released it. I mean, their two other games, uh, Dota 2 and uh, CSGO, are very, very competitive, but TF2 is different. It, it really kind of wasn't, I guess maybe because of the art style or what, what the original creators wanted was a very casual shooter. And that's what it was for a very long time. And now they, you know, they have competitive, but they also revamped the way casual works in TF2. And I kind of want to talk about that. Now it's been a while since the new casual mode has been out and they have been changing it a lot. I remember when I first logged in to when casuals was released, um, it felt really, really different. Um, I'm not going to say I like really hated it. It's just... I wasn't used to the way that uh, the game was sort of telling me to take TF2 seriously and take winning seriously because that's not really how I approached this game. I know there are a lot of people who do approach the game like that where they, they're really about winning, they just, they just want to win, they want to get a lot of you know, high KD, all that stuff, right? Um, for me, it kind of was never like that because I, I thought of TF2 as a very casual shooter, but with the whole you know, there's gonna be a winner and loser now and stuff like that. It just seemed, and especially the way that it was implemented before, where let's say for a payload map, you have to beat the uh, opposing team's time um, or cap more points or whatever. And that, that really, you know, that's, that's probably brought over from the competitive side and it didn't really feel like casuals anymore. It really felt like it was just about winning. And it sort of affected the way uh, I, I approached this game. I'm glad that after a while, you know, Valve started listening to the community and they started to basically remove all that stuff from casuals to make it more like the casuals we all, you know, grew to love from playing this game for many, many years. And you're probably wondering, well, if you don't play to win, then why are you playing, right? Well, I like to play because I just have, like, to have a whole lot of fun with the mechanics of the game, but also it's for the community. Um, I really enjoy community servers like The Fish, where I can go back to that server and I can see people who also join that server regularly. You know, the regulars on that server. It's like a place to hang out. That's something that's very difficult for the matchmaking system to actually do or to replicate um, you know you could grab a, grab a bunch of friends and queue up in a party and then move from server for server to server and, and that's fine but having a full server you know your team and the opposing team of people that you know all of a sudden when I played on uh, like uh, servers like the fish I didn't really care about winning Yes, I got owned a lot because people on that server are very good they're way better than me and I get owned by them all the time yet you know, despite that, I'm still having fun just because I feel like I'm part of that community and yeah, I just, I just, I don't get salty when I get killed by someone I know on the other team. Now, I'm really glad that Valve still has the server browser for regular community servers because I know there's a lot of people out there who like to use that, like to discover new community servers, rejoin the ones that they like, um, and that still needs to be a thing, you know, that I understand why they want to promote matchmaking is because, you know, Matchmaking is important to get the skill level about the same so that people have a fun time playing. No one likes to get owned by someone like that's 10 times better than them. It's just not fun because you can't do anything. It's even worse when it's a fighting game and you literally can't do anything. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think matchmaking is still important. And it seems like the first system that they implemented for casual matchmaking... Well, for one, put me in servers that were nowhere near me. I mean, I'm, I live in Hawaii and... They put me in Luxembourg. Why? I don't really know. Um, I mean, thanks for the two bar, I guess. I ended up playing a lot of medic because that's the only thing I can really aim in that kind of ping. Uh, but yeah, the, the first implementation of casual matchmaking, um, it seems like they took a lot from the comp what they wanted from the competitive side and just assumed that we wanted to play like that or just sort of like was hoping that everyone would like to play like that. But you know, they, they really wanted to promote winning, um, but while that's important, I don't really know if that is the correct approach to this type of game, where you really want to have, it seems like you want to have fun, um, and you don't need to be like destroying the other team to have fun, you don't need to be winning to have fun, because I feel like if you need to win to have fun, that game is going to be 
very it's only gonna be fun for the top percentile right the people who are really good you want to make a game where it's also sort of fun to lose and fun to learn and stuff like that um, and I, I think I think the first implementation implementation of that casual was yes it, it wasn't really doing that kind of stuff I felt that it should do uh, but I'm glad that they're changing it more closer to the way older normal casuals was before this whole thing was implemented because now the game seems you know I'm, I can take it less seriously because it's not really about winning anymore at least I think it's not about winning anymore and I can just have fun my own way. Now, of course, people are going to want to compare TF2 to another game, and that's Overwatch. Um, I haven't really played a whole lot of Overwatch. I just recently got it. Um, I didn't play it as soon as it came out because I was actually busy with other things like virtual reality. Uh, I've been having a lot of fun in VR, and uh, actually developing VR too is a whole lot of fun. Uh, it's very, very challenging. Um, but anyway, uh, a game like Overwatch, where the competitive side is... Yes, there are objectives, and it's kind of like TF2, but the teams are very smaller. They're almost competitive size small in, in this game, in Overwatch. And I'm hoping that that doesn't really ruin the experience for me, um, and for other people as well, because I know on smaller teams, and maybe this happens too on TF2, on big teams, but it seems like on smaller teams, you can get really toxic towards your teammates because your team, like one person on the team, contributes a bigger chunk because the team is just smaller, right? Um, you're playing, you're one sixth of the team, so if you don't contribute, that it really hurts the team, and you can sometimes really see it. Um, and then you know people start flaming and blaming, and it's just oh my gosh, it it gets really toxic. And I had this problem with Dota 2 as well, which is why I kind of stopped playing that. It's just some people. They don't understand. Like I can't have, I can't just fool around because people are there to win, um, and that's one of the things that in Overwatch I'm having a difficult time doing. Yes, I'm trying, I'm, I'm learning, and having fun, but because the team size is so small, if I end up fooling around or just having fun in my casual quote casual way, it hurts the team, and then I don't know, it just becomes not fun for everyone else, or people start yelling, being toxic. In TF2, it seems like I can have fun in TF2 and fool around, and yes, it's it can affect the team, right? There's, there's snipers and spies and stuff, yes, it can happen. But you're one of 12 people. Um, your, your contribution can be a little bit less, so if you decide to fool around, it seems okay. Uh, but in games like this, I'm really hoping that Overwatch uh, doesn't become like my Dota, where <laughs> I play it for a while and try to have fun, but then all of a sudden it becomes all about winning, and uh, I can't seem to fool around anymore because I have to try hard and stuff, and it no longer becomes casual for me. I really hope this kind of game, and all the games that I play really, stay casual for me, at least my, defini my definition of casual, which is, it's not about winning. It's about trying to have your own fun, you know, and that doesn't include winning. I don't want to win to have fun. But hey, maybe my definition of casual is a little weird, um, but I would like to know what do you think casual is, especially in the context of these types of competitive games where it's a, you know, a team versus another team, or maybe it's like a fighting game where it's you versus another person. What does casual mean to you? Let me know in the comments below. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you very much for watching, and have a great day.